the nine man club here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, she's a nice big group. Um, but as Jail just touched on, it's it's important to have all different types of leaders in there, um, and you know it creates a lot more discussion when you've got guys with different opinions. So it's not so much about you know the number of people in there, but who's in there and and what everyone brings. I'm not sure what, how many official leaders are at other AFL clubs, but like you said, it seemed to work last year. Probably not just on the field, but off field. Did you feel like there was that sort of the variety of people to lean on if you needed it? Yeah, I think so, and I think having a range of ages as well really helps. You've got a few younger boys now in Bez and myself and even Harris who um, if you know guys coming in the, the younger draftees don't feel as comfortable going up to the older blokes and saying something they can come to us and ask us for our opinions or we can tell the older boys or even the coaches what they think but I think we've got an environment now where everyone's really comfortable talking to anyone so it's more so just having a whole variety of boys that are in there and everyone brings their own little thing that they're, they're good at. What is it about uh, Dane Zorko that you've sort of, uh, I'm assuming that he got your vote as the captain? Yeah, I think um, he's just such a selfless player now. He, he really leads by example in that um, facet on the field. He's probably changed a lot in that regard and he's the first to admit that. Um, but you see his pressure out there and his willingness to do the tough stuff that not many people want to do. And I think off field everyone really trusts him He's got a really good balance between having a good time but also knowing when to pull the boys up and, and when to be serious. So I think they're two of his greatest strengths as a leader and why he got a lot of votes um, and is captain again. Talking about why there's nine in the leadership break, can we say there's an unofficial tenth party? We saw the Australian cricket captain here today. Obviously he would have been sharing some wisdom. Yeah, Painty, Painty. Uh, popped his head in today and... Um, yeah, taught us a lot, not only about leadership but about resilience. Obviously he played in the, in the test side quite a few years ago and then spent a long time out through injury and that sort of thing and came back in so resonates with a few of our players in that regard but um, it's always good to get different guys in from different codes that um, have been through a lot and there's no, I guess, bigger job than the Australian cricket captain in terms of leadership so that was really interesting to hear his thoughts on it. and. Um, yeah, he'd hear what he had to say about their culture and, and different things like that. Did you get the same message? Like, because when he was selfish, he was crap. When he started to think about his fellow teammates, his whole game lifted. Did you, did you resonate? Yeah, he spoke about that a little bit. I think when he first burst on the scene as a young fella, everything had gone his way. Um, he, he made all the rep sides as a junior. and um, Then he went through that adversity and probably blamed blamed everyone else, as he, as he told us. So... Yeah, it's definitely something that he had to work on and, and now he's, at, you can see the Australian team, they, they play for each other um, and yeah, he's obviously a great um, leader of that and, and plays his role um, as well as anyone and keeps well. Um, so yeah, it was interesting to hear that for sure. And having the number, as you say, like, you know, as was alluded to before, the nine must be, might be the record for the, all the AFL clubs, but it also reflects that this is one in, all in. It's, you know, it's all egalitarian, it's, you know, it's level playing field, everyone's sort of doing this as, as, as one. Yeah, definitely. It, it probably shows that everyone has a say. Um, and I know that that's a thing that we're really big on is a guy can come in in his first year and speak up in the meetings, um, which really gave me confidence to improve my leadership skills by um, being able to speak up and um, say what I think, even as a young fella. I came in, I was quite nervous, as you always are. You've got a lot of great players that you're coming in and you don't want to, you know, yeah. stir the pot too much. But um, I think as the years have gone by, um, I've really become comfortable saying what I think. And even if it's wrong, you know, there's no backlash that people will just come up and say, look, um, thanks, for, thanks for saying that. Um, we probably think there's a better way of doing it or uh, there's no yeah, embarrassment in saying the wrong thing, which is really good culture to have.